Good afternoon, I'm Hank Pattison, and today I'm discussing Legion FX Chapter 4 with the illustrious Andrew May. I think we've used that one before. Screw you! <laughs> Spoilers ahead for Chapter 4 of Legion! That's it, that's, that's, that's the opening that's, that I had prepared for it. That's also the episode. <laughs> that's it. Chapter 4! Um, I love this show. It's so good. It's it's very close to like like... The Wire is a thing. The Wire is comparable to my mind of, like, there's points where people will say of, like, oh, the greatest graphic novel written is Mouse, because Mouse fucking talks about the Holocaust. It's a real thing that actually happened. And The Wire similarly talks about the world and culture. So there, there's, a, like, those are great things. But there's, other than that, there's a part of me that is really close to saying, Legion might be my favorite TV show I've ever seen so far? Right now it's my favorite show. I'm excited to watch it every week and I'm not like that for all the shows that I force myself to watch. Yeah. No, it's it's clever and visually so much fun to watch and it's about the fucking X-Men. Yeah, it's you don't often get all these elements combining in that way and they keep addressing things directly after. Last week we were like Oh, it sounds like Jermaine Clement. He might appear, and this week we get him. It oh, was so good. It was so good. Um, I liked how there's a number of elements they've done in this a few times now of people just telling stories. That it opens with mm -hmm. him telling a story to either David or himself because he's crazy. Oh, so, so and crazy. then um, when uh, when Carrie gives their origin story, she also tells that as a like almost a once upon a time. Yeah. And I I just I really enjoy that framework. I really enjoy hearing characters sort of communicate that way. I really hope she's not dead. I do too. I really hope they're both not dead. Yes. Um, they definitely. They played that one right down the middle. Um, that was a very cool scene when she was fighting and he was dancing. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I really did. And, like, I like both of them as a I do. character. Yeah. Like, I, I really enjoyed all of her. The little lines they feed her are so much fun. Of Just of, like, yeah, she just wants to fucking hurt people. She, she just wants, wants to, like, fight. have an adventure. Yeah. This would be a great place to have a fight. Yeah, she's fun. I like her a lot. I'm, um, uh, I'm glad we're getting to spend more time with her because I was worried she was just going to kind of fade into the background. Well, I hopefully she's not, not like, yeah, well, dead. The ultimate fade. The ultimate fade dead. Though not in this fucking show. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the fucking Lenny Benny situation. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. And I th think this projection of Lenny might be the Shadow King. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder about that. Did um, you notice right at the end when she put his hand or her hand on his shoulder that it was the yellow eyed demon's hand instead? Somebody, s I think I'd read that and I didn't notice it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, something else that I think is super fucking interesting. I'm really glad they did is is the implication that his pet dog oh, is part, like like already cool. getting into the idea of that that if he he could have alternate personalities that aren't human. Mm -hmm. That the dog is a part of him in some way. That was that was dropped really well. The like we never had a dog moment. Ah, it's so good. I it's so uh, interesting and artistic and poignant, and it's got so much to say. And I feel like it's I'm scared. Like when is it gonna fall off? Yeah. The, um, the getting into, like, shared psychic space stuff was so much fun. Watching David try to use his mutant powers, like, just doing the, like... Yeah, he did, like, a number of, like, kind of hand, hand gestures positions. and, uh, and, like, I don't know. You do all that, and then you fucking throw in, like, some beatnik poetry and crazy jazz. Yeah, oh, he's... Jermaine Clement stole this episode for me. He was so good. Jermaine Clement as, as another variation on the crazy professor x yeah sort yeah. of like another um another side of it oh uh, and again like just the visual symbolism um the diving suit the diving yeah. suit encased in a room of ice like it's some of it does Felt very comic booky. well and that's just it like i don't mind if it's weird for the sake of weird mm -hmm. like it still feels cool yeah it all it feels, feels like purposeful. it fits in this world what did he call the space they were in 
I forgot, I I don't remember. I'm afraid it may be yeah. Dream Space, something, or something like that, similar like to that. Astral Plane. I think yeah. it might have even been. But that was cool. I really I felt this episode specifically had a lot of little moments that felt super super out of an like directly out of an X Men comic. Like yeah, them going on this sort of investigation about David, the Astral Plane, or whatever. Like you said, that kind of cryogenic room. Uh, the way um. The way I, I'm doing a really bad job of remembering characters' names right now. Like I remember sure. Carrie's because they kept repeating it so much, and I know David's name, but everybody else gets a little slippery for me. And I remember Sid, but I, other Sid, than that, yeah, like and the I, I just will keep coming back to it. But like Sid, Sid is Rogue. This was a great episode for her. The um, the her using her power the way she like I loved like for that moment it was a power. Mm -hmm. Like, again, like, it's a fucking X-Men show where people are using X-Men powers for a few seconds. Yeah, Yeah, because traditionally it's seen as, like, a hindrance, but that saved the whole team. And I like the touch of... Theoretically. This has a lot of, like, 1960s attitudes towards the paranormal I really love. Like, something that I feel like X-Men comics rarely sort of touch on is the... Well, they miss the 60s. Well, and sort of those past ideas of like that an object, like they, I feel like back there used to be a sort of concept that a psychic could like pick up an object and rub it and think the thoughts of the last person who held oh, it or the things objects like have that. Memory. And like X Men comics are much more of like knocking down walls and doing crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And this feels like getting into the real like the spooky X Files paranormal yeah. aspect of, and again of like it's not just. I have telekinesis or telepathy. It's like, <laughs> no, like, I can remember the memories of these things, and I can do this sort of, but, like, it's not just these clean-cut power structures. I like this sort of nebulous mysteriousness of yeah. it all. Yeah. The more we talk about this, the more I keep remembering things I loved about this episode. i very intrigued with the whole mystery surrounding David and sort of the implication and that, like, maybe he's not who he says he is or how he says he is and makes me think like we don't really know him that well we just know what we've been shown and well and they keep showing us different stuff like i mean Mm -hmm. it was sort of like they like he apparently beat the shit out of his counselor like like with his fist and they mentioned that thing that he says of the like this ruined my life. Yeah. I lost my wife and my practice. Yeah. And like that's our that's our protagonist. Our protagonist beat the shit out of this man while but trying like, to steal from him. But what is I love the conceptualization, like it's such a meta thing. And I think they they sort of do this, I guess, with the show uh, Orphan Black, where you have one act, actor playing multiple characters of like, what is your story structure when your villain and your hero live inside the same actor's head like oh, so cool where do you go and yeah that's let's i love that fucking idea that eventually it is of like oh the worst person in this story is is david, david yeah it's it's uh, i could talk for hours i swear <laughs> they um they i liked how many times people were saying in the episode um is this real that yeah. was David's big line from the end of the first episode, yeah. and people are still walking around. And, like, I, I I like the idea. We were talking before about how Sid used her powers as a way to understand that she does have a soul that goes beyond her body. Yeah. I love the idea that prolonged contact with X-Men and mutant powers leaves you almost with a handicap where you're not really sure if reality is real anymore. Like, it almost fucks with, like, your ability to perceive life. Yeah. And, like, I've had that thought before, but, like, when I read an X-Men comic, there's certain points where, like, oh, man, this person was, like, taken over and turned into a murderer and just all these other... And, like, this thought of, like, man, if I lived in the Marvel Universe... I think I would just be having an ongoing anxiety attack oh, sure. of, like, are these even my thoughts? Like, like, am I just under the fucking control of anything else? And I feel like people would constantly just be walking around just shooting people and being like, yeah, I was controlled by an alien demon for a while. Or, like, like just and it's having like a viable meltdowns. defense, yeah. And, yeah, and Legion, I feel like, leans into that a bit. Yeah, sort of touches on the uncertainty of the, the nature of that reality. Well, they even, like, I like when the memory guy did, like she says, is this real? And he's like, yeah, it's real. 
And then she asks him again and he goes, well, I think it's real. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't know. Nobody knows. And uh, they mentioned something about the, like, I know the difference between an implanted memory. And she says, but what if it's implanted from the inside? What if David is self-creating? Yeah. What if he's hiding things from himself? I love I that think. they that they embrace the idea that memory is fluid. Yes. That they came out like... Oh, they that was originally cool. thought that would be a thing of like, oh, so they can travel back to a concrete memory of like, no. I liked that a lot when she was like, oh, the curtains are different than they were. That was that was cool. And again, it means <clears throat> you can never trust any... And they did that even in the first episode where he misremembered what people he saw in what places. So, I mean, as much as it is a mind fuck to constantly be watching a show... Just it's knowing at all you. times, like, yeah, like, again, is, who the fuck is Lenny? I have no or, idea. Or who the fuck is Audrey Plaza? Like, what the fuck is going on And there? that's the thing, we, I think it was you that mentioned, like, it's weird that they ended up at the same hospital, and now we have an explanation for that. This is the explanation is none of these people are real. Yeah, or whoever the fuck Benny is. all are. See, I was... Uh, I was sort of going back to the idea that Lenny isn't real at all, and that it was just David who, like, sort of weirdly assaulted his girlfriend, and maybe that's what led him to be in the hospital, but they trashed that. Yeah, they, again, went in a weird, different direction. But I like that I can't predict it. Well, and I like the weirdness of, like, is Lenny... (laughs) I, I really like how they set up a thing that Lenny is either a gay woman or a straight man. But it's the same conversation that he's having either way. Oh, yeah. Because they did. It's, yeah, I know I've read another, like, I think maybe when they first were putting out the synopses for the show, there was a point where they just mentioned that Audrey Plaza was playing his lesbian best friend or something. And then, yeah, I don't know. That's just, it's playing with, playing with gender identity in interesting ways. Mm -hmm. I love the visual of, um, when they're in like the version of his room and there's all the like green and black kind of all over the floor it looks like it's like fog almost with like the light particles it's just it was stunning i loved it it's it's a show i mean it's it hits the same places i feel about watching uh coen brothers movie of you need to you can't watch a shitty resolution version of this or you're just you're not it's one of those of like there's shit in the wallpaper that's interesting and almost meaningful to the shot and how it's set up. It's, it's so beautiful. It takes so smart. It takes great, great advantage of the fact that it is a visual medium. Yep. <laughs> well, hey, that's the best talking about chapter four. I knew if I if I did a thing there, it would it would cause an awkward pause to happen. And really, we're talking so much about it. Um, do you have anything else you wanted to throw out, or is that a... Uh, I mean, I'm constantly It's so good. Things, but it's I, just I, so good. Yeah, honestly, I, I've been trying to recommend it to more people, but we're shitty. Uh, and the conversation, um, the little story that um, What's-His-Name tells at the beginning of it, of fear versus empathy, that's such a, like... We're getting to the fucking primal core of Xavier mm-hmm. versus Magneto, yeah. and like so much of their fucking like the closed hand or the open fist. Oh yeah, or the, the other two, way around. There's two it's, types of stories yeah. that people tell their children. Yeah, I thought that was really good. And again, of the that I legitimately don't know what kind of story Legion is, but not in a like, bad way. The only thing I am assured of is that I don't believe they're going to kill off David. I think they have a season two planned, and Thanks. this actor will. Well, I, I, I think they're going to leave it open for it at the very least. But I, I, that's, I mean, that's fucking TV. Nobody goes into something saying we're going to make one season of a show. Like it might take a while to make it, but that, yeah. and that's the only certainty I have is I don't think they're going to kill David off at the end of this, unless again it is a closed loop mini but they would have said unless, mini series. or unless it's a very comic booky thing and he's so powerful that he comes back yeah oh god or if they pulled a fucking doctor who and we're like man now it's a different actor Ugh. and then they could do 25 seasons of Legion <laughs> I mean if they were all this good I'd probably watch all of them it would be great <laughs> you're drunk now that's, that's me being a fan of 25 seasons of Legion <laughs> well Chapter four. <laughs> I just really Are you like seducing this show. Me? I maybe. Uh, let's. That's the power of Legion. <laughs> that's 
That sounds weird and biblical when I say that. I, I thought of Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> Thank you.